Okay, so let's look how the nails are doing. Skin is way better. So it's been four weeks since this client came to me. So now they're quite grown out and there's some separation. So obviously the gel, I mean, it's four weeks. It doesn't last forever. And let's see, there's a couple other accidents with these ones. These ones are gone. Mm, we're going to shorten them. These ones are pretty good. And the thumbs, unfortunately, did not survive. And it happens. Uh, this one we're going to soak off. So we're going to soak off. And I think I'm going to do IBX treatment. We'll see how they look after they're shortened. We'll see. And we're going to take the gel off and see how this client is doing just with a clear um, nail polish. Because then maybe we can do... The skin is so much better. Wow. Wow. Because we'll see how we are going to do with maybe like, I don't know, manicures every two weeks with just like natural nails. With just the nail polish. Okay. So I'm going to... Oops. Just remove some of the, the gel. It's a thin coat, but it's going to easy, be easier to soak off. And shorten. So we're going to keep the nails as short as possible because that is the safest way. So what I do is I just shorten them and then I shape them after with the file. Not a lot of gel around the cuticle, so I'm being very careful. There's a little bit more, obviously, around the free edge now. And just because I'm showing you guys this, that doesn't mean that everyone should be able to do this. Because I have a lot of experience with this for machine so I make it look very easy but if you are doing this yourself because for some reason you can't find a place that can remove gel for you properly because that's the thing properly then I suggest just um, filing with a regular file a little bit and actually if you want to see a video I made a video I actually put some gel on my nails a soakable gel and then I soaked it off to show you guys how to soak it off properly so I'll link this at the end of this video so now I'm staying on a nail. Sorry, I'm staying on the gel. I'm not touching the nail. I'm going to wrap this hand, and as this is soaking, I'm going to work on the other hand. Let's make sure that this is saturated well. sure that it fits and it's not too much cotton because if you're putting like a huge amount then you don't have the cotton saturated properly and then you're not going to soak it off properly so always it's pretty thin it's almost dripping always make sure that it's tight if one of them this is really important if one of them falls off um, and you have to rewrap it just use a new foil and the new cotton and saturate it more don't just reapply this one because if this one falls off it's probably going to dry out completely so if you put it back it's not going to work 
and when this is all crinkled it's not going to fit properly either and the proper fit is really really important if it's not fitting properly it's not going to soak up properly you know what let's just add the clips The foil that I used to use in Canada was much thicker. This one is very soft. It's thinner. So sometimes it just comes apart a little bit. Okay, I can time it now. doing this yourself make sure that you do one hand at a time because it's you're gonna loosen up this hand if you're working with it so it's always a little bit more time consuming but it just it's way more effective we're going to work on these two nails as the other ones are soaking off so I'm going to shorten them as much as I can someone actually quite a few people asking about the filing techniques and um, one of the most important things is that when you're filing the sides don't file them this way because you're gonna file into the nail so quite a few people were asking so make sure I think it was Judith too Judy Judy if you're watching here put the file underneath and just be very very gentle don't file too much into here you see because this is the the growth channel so you don't hear like where the white starts, this is where you can place the file. Because sometimes people try to make the short nails very round and they really file like into this area. And especially when they have wider nails, they want to make them thinner. And that completely just destroys the structure of the nail and the nails can break. So you see, I'm going like this. I'm not going in like this. I'm not putting pressure. Sometimes I go with the file just to feel if there is any catches here but I don't really press and I don't file hard here so the safest thing to do is to file from underneath can you see just being very gentle around the corners and filing back and forth I'm still getting the questions I should probably make a, a brand new video just addressing this and I'll, I'll include a link in the description box why so check it out Another thing, if this uh, skin here is a little bit calloused, make sure that you are taking care of your skin, obviously. But if it's still a little bit callous and it drives you absolutely crazy that you just wanna pick, you can actually smooth it a little bit, just like this. Don't go like this and don't go over the nail. Place the file right here and go like this. So this is not to remove dry skin. This is just a smooth, hard skin. So there is a big difference. There are two things that people are trying to do. If the skin is dry, so white, dry, but when you touch it, it's soft, put a lot of cream oil, don't really file it. It's actually better not to file it. But if the skin is hard, then you can soften a little bit. Don't remove the hard skin, 
the keyboard is to soften it. So you're just going to put the file here and just go like this and then just feel for it. If it's smoother, then just stop filing. Same thing with here. It's just a couple of little movements. You see this and then just run your your finger and you feel that the skin is smoother so this is all you need to do don't try to remove all the hard skin because the skin is there for a reason if you overdo it you're gonna actually get the opposite you're going to get more hard skin because your body is just trying to protect itself and it's going to just build more skin from too much friction less is more and then use the for example the carousel cream it's amazing for that because it's going to moisturize the skin. It's just, it's a very, very gentle chemical exfoliant, which is way better than any, anything really manual. But sometimes you just have to touch it up manually. But the, the bulk of the work needs to be done with the creams, with your skincare. Same thing goes for calluses. Like my clients don't have calluses anymore, uh, my pedicure clients, and they, they used to. We're going to do this now to give the nails a little bit more time. So now I'm pushing back the living skin, which exposes the cuticle. So this is that I'm pushing back is a living skin. So if you're just doing this, if you if that skin is stretching because it's growing and it's stuck to the nail, doing this on a regular basis, even with the little manicure stick, I'll show you which one, is going to make the skin grow uh, much more normal. It's just like this, sideways, okay? So th this is not pushing back cuticle because cuticle is here and I'm leaving it behind. I don't worry about the cuticle because the only time you really have to remove cuticle is before you're polishing your nails. Other than this, you really don't. So just push back the living skin. In our case, we are going to remove the cuticle because we're doing, we're polishing the nails, but for like daily care, you can just very gently nudge it back. If it doesn't go all the way, that's fine. Over time, it will. So now I'm going to use a diamond bit. This bit is made specifically for a natural nail. You can, you can uh, use it on a natural nail very, very gently. Sorry, I'm picking up. Okay. The thing that I like about, about Electrofile is that you can be very, very precise. So this is not used for speed. This is used for precision because you have a very small surface that's working for you. So you can actually just touch something and let go and you're very, very precise. And I get a lot of questions and people are like, oh, what, what if the skin is overgrown or something? Just keep doing what you're doing and eventually it will get better. But the gentle care, and it takes a while sometimes, and you know, it depends too, if you've been cutting it, uh, that skin sometimes is very, very calloused, and it takes a, a long time for the skin to heal uh, and to start growing a little bit more normal. So just have patience. Because the more you protect it, the softer it will become. Because skin that's protected is getting softer. So you see, I can now soften these areas here uh, very, very gently. But I'm softening it, I'm not removing it. This tiny bit of gel here. Same thing with calluses, you should not be removing calluses because calluses are there for a reason. You should be softening and protecting the skin, wearing proper shoes. And then if you're not overdoing it, they actually get better. Because I find even podiatrists, I have to say, I had some clients that would go to podiatrists and they would come back with completely like removed skin until the skin was pink. And they had hard time walking. And of course, then your skin is going to develop more callus. But if you treat it very, very gently, and if you're using the proper creams on a regular basis, and you, and you exfoliate, feet are a little bit different, but once a week, 
uh, the calluses were greatly, greatly reduced. Like people couldn't believe it, how much better their feet were and how they didn't have to cut anything. So just gentle maintenance is key. So let's start with the first one. Now there are two types of gels. I had one of the viewers just purchase the Anna's Neon Device request. And she was telling me that initially they used poly gel on her nails and then they used, I think, a regular gel. And she couldn't get it off. So it's really important to know which kind of gel you have on your nails. If it's a hard gel, then you can't remove it like this. If it's a soft gel or soakable gel, then you still have to reduce this and then you can remove it this way. If it's a hard gel, unfortunately, in her case, I saw the nails and um, she sent me pictures, obviously, and the product was actually bonded quite well. So I told her to just, for now, try to grow it out and then a month from now, see how the nails are because it's it really depends. Sometimes it's better to just file it off. Not just back. So the thing is, I want to show you. I'm trying to nudge it back. I don't really go in and try to separate because this is a seal. The seal is for a reason. So I just push it gently, nudge it gently as far as it goes, okay? But I'm not really making any pockets because the seal in there is for a reason to prevent any bacteria or any pathogens, viruses, whatever, fungal even spores to enter where the nail is growing. The nail is growing here, the matrix is here. So this is why your body is trying to protect that area at all costs. So the more you dig there, the, the more it is risky that an infection can happen. And sometimes when the infection is bad enough and it creates a lot of inflammation, sometimes it can be even permanent damage to the nail root. So this is pretty serious. I, yeah, I would rather not be um, doing this kind of risky treatments. So just gently. And then I get a lot of comments, people saying that I don't cut the cuticles and they prefer to have the cuticles cut. Well, and the reason is because very often people think that the cuticle is like a vague area, I don't know, around the nail, because that's what we've been taught. And a lot of even companies call this, like they call all this a cuticle, but then this is cuticle too. So how can you have two tissues on your body called the same thing? It's not possible, right? So it turns out that this is actually a living skin. It's also called proximal nail fold, but you don't have to remember that this is just skin around the nails. And the cuticle is this white part that we can remove. So I do remove the cuticle because it is important uh, to remove it before any product application. Um, but I don't cut the living skin. It's just my preference and this is why my clients are here because that's their preference as well. But a lot of people prefer this skin really, really cut. And there are many places that offer that. And that's their decision. I think it's too risky, but you know, we all have our opinions. I personally don't even like that look, but again, you know, beauty is, I, as I wrote, beauty is in the eye of the beholder and um, we all have choices. Yeah, I'm going to actually probably, no, it's fine. I thought I would rewrap this one, but no, it's fine. And I think very often too, um, there's just so much pressure on like instant perfection. And people try to, oh, we did this. People try to have these shocking, amazing before and after pictures. And then if they're not perfect, they get in a lot of trouble <laughs> on the internet. So 
I'm not saying I'm underst I understand this approach to doing things that are a little risky, but you know, it is what it is. And this is why maybe sometimes people just do these things. Again, I'm getting underneath here. Get a lot of questions people asking why i don't clip the nails i just filed them i don't think there was a first of all i shortened them with electric file i find i like it i like doing this with electric file it's very gentle the clipping thing i personally just i don't know it, i don't like it i remember i think i started and i was working with hairdressers and uh, <laughs> honestly people don't like that clipping clicking sound it just wears them out so that's one thing. Second of all, you can, you know, these pieces are flying all over the place. <laughs> so I just, and also when the nails are very hard, you can, you can crack the nail if the clippers are a little dull or the nails are very hard. So just to simplify the whole process, I just shape the nails. So I just shorten them first with electric file. So even if I have natural nails and I don't remove any gel or anything like that, I shorten them with the e-file if I have to, if they're really like overgrown. And then I shape them. And I really don't see there any issues with that. see we almost have all the good nail grown out so the damage is here now it's almost grown out but just this goes to show like this is where the damage ends it takes a long time for the damage to grow out and very often people get very frustrated because they still see this side breaking peeling and things like that so they, they think that they're doing the wrong thing but you know they're doing everything right it's just it takes time for that damaged part to grow out because you can't really fix it like properly you can condition it, you can make it better, but you can't really, you know, repair the damage. So this, one, this is why this is peeling a little bit, because it's still a little bit damaged. But the key is to manicure the nails now without causing further damage, so then the damage part can grow out, and then the nails are going to be nice and healthy. when manicuring uh, nails, especially when someone is uh, has a tendency to kind of pick or bite a little bit, it's very important to leave everything as, um, as smooth as possible because if there is anything that's sticking or uh, hard pieces, anything like that, it's really, really tempting then to, to try to make it even. I think people that, you know, try bite their nails a lot, they're kind of perfectionists because they're just trying to perfect the shape of the nail, and that's what happens. Ah, shape these ones now. That's what happens when you're starting like in the middle somewhere. It's a little confusing, especially when I'm talking. It's amazing how much faster I work when I don't talk.
really funny. I get a lot of questions in the comment section. People are saying, oh my God, why are you cutting this client's nails so short? And the truth is because that's what the client wants. <laughs> and I actually get a lot of clients from uh, even Instagram and they come in because they see me do short nails and they like short nails. And this is why they, they contact me because they're like, oh, finally, I found someone who does short natural nails. So that's how they find me. So again, I'm just going to nudge back the skin. I'm going to remove the cuticle. softening the skin so I'm not trying to get rid of dry skin so that's not how you get rid of dry skin the ifa is actually on the quite low speed it's about 8,000 rpm and the pressure is really really light but I have a very good glasses on you have to see what you're doing and a proper angle too I'm flat with the nail. I'm not doing this. Can you see? I'm not doing this. I'm doing this. Just going to bevel this a little bit. guys it is really important to know when to stop because right now the skin looks much worse than it normally does the skin around the nails because it, it looks dry because we just soaked the nails in you know acetone first it's very temporary dryness and then there's dust so it just looks maybe kind of bad but once the hands are washed and the oil is on it looks absolutely normal so you know don't be tempted to 
perfect the skin at this point too much because you can then cause a little bit more harm than good. And you can overfile the skin, which will lead to um, more skin callousing. That's a, a word. Touch up here with the machine. Flake. See, I'm not going over the whole thing with a lot of pressure. So that can cause damage. So now, if you are, important thing, if you're shaping your nails with a file that's a little coarse, this is what you have to do to all the nails, and they're going to be nice and smooth, there's not going to be anything catching, nothing, perfect smoothness. So it really doesn't matter, I'm going to make this one a little bit shorter, it doesn't really matter what kind of, I mean, grit you're using, so how harsh is the file. This is about 180 grit. Normally, 240 is uh, recommended for natural nails, um, but 180 works too. But all you have to do is you have to then use like a smooth block. This is 220, 240, and just smooth it. So now, I'm just going to 
they would gently go over the surface because we just removed that gel. I'm not really putting pressure, I'm not doing this. I'm just gliding the buffer. Because I want to catch anything that's on top of the nail, but I don't really want to remove layers, too much layers from the nail. The top layers of the natural nail are very, very important because they are uh, different from the bottom layers of the nail. Because uh, people think that all nail layers, like the whole surface is the same, but that's not the case. The top layers of the nail are much more resistant to staining, to damage, to water even. And so we try to keep as many layers on top as possible. And also nail, this is, this is super important, the nail polish bonds the best to the first layers of the nail. So sometimes when I hear that people have problems with bonding of the product, there's sometimes nothing wrong with even a technique, there's nothing wrong with the product. The problem is that the nails are so damaged that they can't even hold the product. It's almost like when the hair is bleached multiple times and then you try to go dark, it's not going to hold on to the color because nothing will stick to it. So the same thing goes for nails. Well, it's not the same, it's very similar. So you know what, I think this is going to grow out. I don't think IBX is going to do that much for these two nails only. favorite Dior nail glow and I'm gonna do two coats just to add a little bit more shine and I started doing this wiping this with a towel because I have hard time finding the lint free little pads and this works really really well the sides. Mm -hmm. So this is alcohol, 99%. Okay. I had quite a few people ask me about this product and I'll tell you right away. It's really nice too, beautiful brush, but it doesn't have the same glow that this one does. So um, I still prefer this. So I'm going to do the first coat quite thin. And this dries super, super quick. By the way, quite a few people are asking me what I think about that new OPI hmm, repair mode. Uh, and I don't know yet, but I think I'm going to get it quite soon and I'm going to review it. I'm going to test it, so maybe even on this client we can test it. But I have a feeling that it what it will do, it just bonds the layers that are left over. So it doesn't really build the nail because there's no way you could regrow the damaged part so it's probably just bonding the existing the existing layers that's what probably it does which is i mean that's a good idea 
but is it going to be a miracle i don't think so but it's going to be definitely probably a very useful tool so we'll see dry I'm going to do like a couple of drying drops show clients how much oil to use after ideally each hand wash because right now I'm using so much that people get a little confused so here's what I do I show them one drop okay like this like this like this just rub it in you can even wipe it with a towel and you're done and this is really really important because this is how you keep the skin around your nails nice and healthy and flexible so it doesn't get calloused up and then at night uh, carousel especially when the skin has a tendency to um, to get hard or if um, if the skin was cut in the past and is callous because of that see how normal and absolutely beautiful the skin looks and I can feel actually the skin is softer it's not as yeah, it's not as hard as it used to be. There's a huge, huge, huge difference. Mm -hmm. 